Elon Musk says Ross Gerber is such an idiot that he can't even tell he's an idiot. BYD sales dropped by 42% from last quarter. This was a tough quarter for everyone. Elon Musk has called out Ross Gerber before, but not like this. And most importantly, with these disastrous sales numbers, Tesla has fallen all the way down to the number one EV sales chart spot. Some Tesla stock investors are trying to figure out how Elon's post on X caused BYD sales to drop 43%. I think this is the most valid criticism I've seen so far. I see Elon parroting the same argument that a lot of the usual suspect feedback loop breakers are saying to excuse Tesla's quarter. BYD is indeed down 42% quarter to quarter, but the company had insane growth last quarter and the auto business is seasonal. And on top of that, which I think is the most important part, Year over year, BYD is actually up 13%, while Tesla is down 8.5%. I think that's what most people are actually worried about. But when you realize that BYD is releasing a new model left and right very often, I think the question becomes more like, why didn't BYD grow a lot more year over year? For Tesla, the next major growth catalyst in terms of deliveries is going to be the next generation vehicle, but that will take a little bit of time. Until then, likely we are going to enjoy a buying opportunity of Tesla stock, unless FSD suddenly gets much, much better. And by the way, I just tried FSD myself in my vehicle yesterday. I'll share my detailed experience a bit later, but overall my takeaway is it's not perfect, but my confidence of robot taxi definitely becoming a reality in the future has certainly gone up. I'm especially impressed how good it is in construction zones before the V11, I would have to disengage before any construction zone, because if I didn't, it would do something really silly. V12 did not do anything silly even a single time during my one hour drive, and I have probably gone through at least 10 construction zones. There's so much construction here in Vancouver City right now. I also had emergency vehicles and I handled these fine too. It's definitely not perfect and there were issues, but the rate of improvement is mind-boggling. Keep in mind, I'm in Canada and I don't think Tesla prioritizes Canada. And with some of the companies in China realizing that a vision uh, approach is a better approach and that you need an end-to-end -end approach to solve autonomy. And because Tesla has so much more data, Tesla has 6 million vehicles on the roads and that number is increasing rapidly. Other companies have how many? A few hundred, a few thousand. So my confidence has certainly improved, but there are issues and I will talk about those. And perhaps the most important part, before the V11, remember how I said many times, I really don't like driving with it if I go to a new area that I'm not familiar with because I would just not know when it would disengage suddenly and do something really silly. But I liked it in areas that I was really familiar with. With V12, Actually, I would prefer to keep it on in areas that I have never been to. It's that good. And that's primarily because I value my safety. And a few times yesterday during my one hour drive, it noticed a few things before I did. And I really liked how smoothly it can change lanes. And it's like another person watching out for you to make sure that you're not doing anything silly. James has provided us with a pretty detailed update about what's going on with Tesla right now. I think it's a fairly decent post. I am struggling to reconcile all of the posts I am reading about the excuses for this Q1 performance. I don't want to name names because I like some of these people. But guys, please accept reality. Demand is well below supply and even much further below production capacity. This is the truth. Sure, the reasons vary slightly regionally, fine, but it's time to face reality. In aggregate, quarter over quarter, days of supply almost doubled from 16 to 30. Inventory vehicles increased by 50,000. And this quarter, production actually dropped by 61,000 quarter over quarter, but there were issues with the Red Sea and the terrorist attack. James continues, this is with Tesla vehicle average selling price at an all-time low, basically. I think ASP may get a small boost from Cybertruck this quarter, but meh, still down massively year over year. Also, I don't think relative performance versus other EV sales and brands is relevant either. This is 
Copium. Tesla competes with cars, not just EVs. I have always made this case. When it was a bullish argument, EV share is irrelevant. People agreed with it. Now it being used by bulls to defend Tesla's lackluster sales. Who gives a crap about EV share? Who gives a crap about other company EV profitability? Ask Toyota if they care about the profitability of these five EVs they sell every quarter. James is not wrong in the sense that in the US at least, car sales year over year, overall sales are up. This is looking at February data, though, not March. But I have no reason to think that March would be any different. Executive analyst at IC Car says, Tesla is facing the reality of being demand constrained and not supply constrained for the first time in its history. Between ever increasing competition, aging product, and a general pullback in EV sales, the most successful car company of the past 10 years has to reconsider its long-term planning. You mean like not releasing the next generation vehicle? Obviously, Tesla is working on executing its long-term plans, which is bringing new vehicles to the market. There's some arguing about what's focusing on the Cybertruck first instead of the smaller, compact Tesla vehicle. Was that a mistake? I personally think if Tesla focused on a cheaper vehicle, the volume growth would continue. However, Tesla would have probably had to go with 2170 cells and not 4680 cells. But with the Cybertruck, Tesla can go with 4680 cells, focus on that technology, and then put that technology into the next generation vehicle. To maximize the stability of the share price, I think it would have been better to focus on the next generation vehicle, just get 2170 cells. But if you're like me and you are enjoying the buying opportunity, then you really don't mind. Tesla first focusing on the Cybertruck. Tesla is testing a lot of new technology in the Cybertruck, which it will put into the next generation vehicle, I believe. And the next generation vehicle is going to be a very high volume vehicle. And I'm not sure if you really want to put all of this crazy new tech into a such a high volume product. But the Cybertruck will basically make the technology mature first. I think the biggest reason why Tesla stock year to date has dropped is because of lower expectations for deliveries. Stephen Mark Ryan made an interesting chart. Tesla deliveries. You can see the history here. And this is a reputation of butthurt babies. Stephen can certainly be quite entertaining. In the meantime, Elon Musk is celebrating all time high traffic on X. Tesla China is launching its first interest free policy promotion. Buyers can enjoy three years of interest free benefits with a down payment of $11,000 if they order the Model 3 or Y before April 30th. Ray says there's still a lot of people who have misconceptions about EVs. This is the reason why Tesla needs to push educational ads to let the general public know about the benefits of Teslas. Check this out. Even a person of your considerable automotive intelligence has to concur that a heavier car with considerable power is going to wear discs, pads, and tires faster than a lighter car regardless of propulsion. Tires, yes, but brake pads with Teslas? That's so wrong. Over 150,000 miles on my Model S, says Ray, and the pad wear was only found to be 50% off, which means my Tesla can easily go up to 250,000 miles. And newer Teslas have even stronger regen braking. There are definitely a lot of people that don't know about that. A similar thing actually happened to me and uh, my Tesla vehicle basically saved me. I think most people don't know how good Tesla software is at things like this, but you especially appreciate it if you have experienced it firsthand. Tesla's FSD development leader says whether some surface is drivable or not is all contextual. We typically don't want the car to drive on dirt, but since the paved road is closed, the car needs to drive on dirt. The same logic also applies to, for example, mounting small curbs to avoid a large obstacle. So collision avoidance cannot be an absolute objective, but a relative one. The actual objective is minimizing risk of injury property damage while still getting to the destination. It requires a lot of intelligence to assess this risk accurately. This comes naturally to humans and is now also obvious to the car's AI. Kevin has an issue with FSD and I had the exact same issue here in Vancouver downtown and I actually missed the turn the first time I went there. It's quite an intersection. Uh, FSD did not miss but it did take the wrong lane at first and then it just stopped. 
and then I had to take over uh, to make sure that I don't get honked at more. I did get honked <laughs> once. So the issue is there's a bicycle lane and then the car chose the center lane and not the right lane. In Meet Kevin's case, he did this test four times and three out of four times the car chose the center lane and not the right lane. He said that the Tesla car does it right if there is a lead car. In my case, it was definitely not a safety related intervention, but it was quite an annoying intervention. This kind of thing, I don't think should be too hard to solve for Tesla. Tesla just needs a lot more data with bicycle lanes. I thought construction zones are going to be incredibly difficult to solve and something like this, choosing the right lane when there's a bike lane, I thought wouldn't be that difficult. I think Tesla just focus a lot more on the construction zones and if Tesla can solve construction zones, I think it can definitely solve these lane selection issues too. Look at the deliveries in South Korea in March. <laughs> wow. That must be an all-time record for one single month, I think. Canaccord Genuity reiterates a $234 buy rating in his new note. It's easy to say that it's all demand-related for reasons like it's Elon Musk's fault for being so controversial or pick your geography. Demand is terrible or EV sentiment is waning. Some of those factors are likely partially responsible. Nonetheless, we continue to maintain that the issues of Q1 2024 were somewhat demand-related but mostly supply related. In its release, Tesla itself noted that the decline in volume was partially due to the early phase of the production ramp of the updated Model 3 at our free month factory and factory shutdowns resulting from shipping diversions caused by the Red Sea conflict and an arson attack at Gigafactory Berlin. I think about the Model 3 he is definitely right, but overall, the inventory also increased by quite a bit. We would add to that if Cybertruck were fully ramped at 62,500 units a quarter of production, the story of the quarter would have been much different. We assume the company delivered 3,500 Cybertrucks in Q1 2024. Looking at Troy's updates, which are now public to everyone, he estimated before the numbers were released uh, that Tesla has produced about 3,500 cyber trucks so that should be roughly right gary calculated uh, days of inventory and based on his estimate it's 29 not 30 but still almost a doubling from the last quarter but in the auto industry 60 is actually pretty good for now i expect the inventory level to stay elevated relatively speaking compared to before gary black though is nowhere near as positive as scanner core genuity he says there's no way to sugarcoat q1 deliveries as anything but negative i don't think gary black updated his tesla stock target yet but i do expect an update from him at any moment and i expect the price target to be lower. People seem to completely pretend this didn't happen. Elon made a bet to focus on robot taxis instead of new vehicle development so far. He has been wrong. Maybe he will be proven right, but the truth is the truth, says James. The transcript is from two years and three months ago where Elon stated that Tesla is not working on the $25,000 vehicle. I think eventually Elon will not be wrong, but I think many investors would have preferred Elon to basically do both at the same time, do robot taxis, but also do the cheaper vehicle. If Elon chose that path, by now we would have had that vehicle, but Elon Musk has made some big bets throughout his career and without making these bets, he wouldn't be where he is today. So by saying he was so wrong, we are basically also sort of saying, well, Tesla would have been better off without Elon. You don't get the good without some of the bad. Check this out. There's another Cybertruck that has been put on sale. This one is going to be sold in six days. The numbers have just gone up again. It's now 181,000. You can rewind and see. I think this is fairly bullish for the Cybertruck because it has been out now for multiple months and yet it still gets these high bids anyway we should have another new video from sandy monroe dropping very soon i'm looking forward to it kim kardashian sure likes posting her cyber truck that's great for tesla i don't quite know if omar is being serious or sarcastic here but uh, this is a true statement 
regardless of that, ever since Tesla started advertising, sales started dropping. So what do you think would have happened if Tesla did not advertise at all? I think that sales probably would have been down more. We don't know for sure, but I think that's what would have happened. But at the same time, we don't know how much is Tesla advertising. Did Tesla just spend a few million or did Tesla spend a lot of money? James says this is oddly bullish. That's basically because based on stock astrology, the stock did not go below 160 after the bad delivery number. I think James is not wrong here. I know this is hard for some people to believe, but it is possible for Tesla to make the best product develop FSD bot and everything else, while at the same time having a competent strategic forward-looking marketing plan at the same time. It is not zero sum. It's not like they are short for cash. Chicken Genius predicts that Tesla stock is going down to $69. James thinks that he would manage Bitcoin better than Tesla can. I think he's not wrong about that. But here's something really interesting. GM sold 16,500 EVs in the US in Q1, down 20% year over year so overall their sales numbers are not really doing uh badly but their ev numbers ooh, a lot of chips are produced in taipei region and they just had a massive earthquake it was the biggest earthquake in the last 25 years probably well over a thousand people have been injured i also have quite a bit of family over there but tsm c has not been affected the stock hasn't been so for tesla probably this has no impact i think tesla seriously needs to change this policy tesla lease sales declined to two percent despite extremely generous lease rates and for the model three you get the 7500 dollars ev tax credit basically built into your lease price but not if you buy the vehicle in my opinion tesla must stop the elon dogma of not allowing customers to buy the leased car at the end of the lease i think that's why the lease rates are so low it may be good to experiment with new lease terms this quarter bradford says this issue in his opinion is the number one reason why cfo of tesla the former CFO Zach retired. People quit when they feel they aren't being listened to. But there was some evidence pointing to the, th the fact that perhaps Zach has been fired. So we don't really know what actually happened. Oh, Tesla will reportedly send a team from the US to India by late April to study sites for a proposed electric car plant. Remember that really good month that Tesla just had in Korea? Well, Tesla overtook Mercedes as the second largest seller of imported vehicles in Korea last month. It marked the first time for Tesla to beat Mercedes-Benz in Korea in terms of sales. Once Tesla releases a next-generation vehicle, Tesla will outsell most of the automakers on this planet. RBC Capital said this about Tesla. We value autonomy above the car business and think that the FSD free trial could potentially be more important for the Tesla investment thesis longer term than Q1's delivery miss they said that their price target is 290 dollars about that promotion in china if you are a new customer you get three years of interest-free payments but if you have a vehicle to trade in you actually have five years of interest-free payments that's basically a price cut but remember that tesla just increased the prices in china by a little bit so it's not so much a price cut as is a change in strategy we now know ford's ev numbers ford sold 20,000 evs in q1 making ford america's second best-selling ev brand behind tesla for this quarter ford's overall sales are up seven percent year over year while ev sales surged 86 percent year over year but when you sell this few evs it's not that difficult to grow now oh, tesla now shows the starting lease price for the new model 3 right on the home page and so Ayer agrees with me too if tesla truly wants more people to lease their vehicles they need to allow customers to buy the car at the end of their lease omar is trying to rally all of the tesla stock investors my brothers and sisters of tesla all the people who love this company not for the stock or for publicity but because they truly love the products and tesla's vision for the future you must cut out the cancer and rebuild the tesla community that was so pivotal in the past if you imagine tesla the company as a house i like this house i want to own in this house and live in this house i don't care what quote i'm getting to sell the house today i don't want to sell it I like this house. Who wants to live in this house with me? Looks like I'm going to have a roommate going forward. Oh, uh, check this out. Ford has posted a new job opening for a steer by wire Mechatron. Mechatron. 
Mechatronics, electrical engineer. I expect many more companies to follow. There's quite a bit of hype about the smartphone maker Xiaomi scoring a hit with the first EV selling out for the year in 24 hours. They probably have about a hundred thousand orders right now. And here's what it's like to drive in this vehicle. Listen to the noise, it's coming from the car. <laughs> The owner pulled over to check and they found water leaking from six spots of the underbody. I don't think if you store water anywhere in the vehicle, really. I mean, if it is water, slightly soapy water is going to be the windshield fluid, but it's leaking from six spots. Probably cool it. Waymo just announced the launch of Uber Eats deliveries via Waymo vehicles with robo-taxis. Food delivery is going to get a lot cheaper, right? I mean, it's not going to come to your door anymore, but you can walk out and just pick it up. That's still pretty good and much cheaper eventually when robo-taxis scale. Rivian just produced its 100,000th vehicle. Tesla just made its 6 millionth vehicle to put it in perspective elon replied with yeah should be obvious to omar's post here in the future every car will be self-driving and electric number two every car tesla makes is self-driving and electric and they are the world leader in ev sales number three as robot cars eat the auto market tesla will be the overwhelming benefactor emmett has a pretty good comment here as well i remember when model s deliveries began in june of 2012. Its success was obvious. Motor Trend even named it Car of the Year. Yet for months, the market still priced Tesla for bankruptcy with a mere two to three billion dollar market cap. A proper revaluation only occurred when strong delivery numbers and margins began to hit the earnings reports in 2013, almost a year later. Elon also just said, and we will license the tech to other car companies. And there's a good chance this is going to be true if his licensing earnings will exceed Tesla's auto business earnings. <laughs> Marcus Brownlee just released a new video with the Fisker Ocean, but this time it has the software version 2.0. With the previous video, he killed the whole company. Not that it would have survived without that video anyway. but. Uh, Marcus is definitely guilty in this case. I'll share my FSD V12 update in another video, probably on a slower news day. I will also upload one more video today on this channel with all of the analysts reacting to Tesla's deliveries. And in the meantime, YouTube says you should watch this video next. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't yet. That really helps the channel. And I will see you in the next episode, probably later today.